All right, everybody, I want to do a bit of a follow-up um, from the video I posted the other day titled, I Want to Get Something Off My Chest. I was a little taken back by the response that I got from that video. Uh, off the top of my head, I don't really recall a video that that got such a response, meaning people showed up in all of my inboxes and a couple in the email and even a couple of people approached me in person to give me their two cents on that video. So <clears throat> I, wanna, I wanna follow some things up and set a couple of things straight. Uh, and again, I don't normally do this. I normally, uh, explain myself once, maybe twice. Uh, and if you don't understand where I'm coming from, then you don't understand where I'm coming from and I'm not trying to force it. The reason why I'm explaining this has bigger, deeper, more spiritual and healing reasons behind it. So where do I start? I guess probably the first and most common um, response that I got from that video was don't let the opinions of jealous haters get you down. And I, I can't believe that I never even took that into consideration when I was making that video. This has absolutely nothing to do with the opinions of miserable, jealous haters who are envious of my success. This has nothing to do with those people at all. Um, yeah, their, their opinion means like literally nothing to me. <laughs> I didn't even take into consideration that some people might think that I was talking about those people, um, has nothing to do with them. Um, this has to do, like I mentioned in the video, um, I kind of alluded to certain people, not anybody specifically, but when I said that, I'm worried about people's perceptions who probably shouldn't matter. What I mean is my whole life, I have been weird. Um, I mean, from birth. Now, I know that that's kind of a touchy subject and a touchy topic because, you know, so many people say, well, that's a good thing. You should strive to be weird. And... Most of the people who feel that way are people who are just so basic and normal that they would give anything to be different. And I'm coming from a place where I'm one of those people who is so weird and so different. I've just always wanted to know what it feels like to be normal. And again, this shouldn't matter because, you know, in the old 3D world, what we were taught is normal is basically everything that we in the spiritual community are working to dismantle. So this is what puts me in this funny psychological conundrum because I'm talking about just regular old normal folks of society. You know, uh, just regular commonplace normal people. I am embarrassed <laughs> uh, because of what I do for a living. You know, and I mean, it even goes a little bit beyond that, I would say. I mean, I mean, even in the realm of entertainment in in the realm of, you know, being a, I hate this word, but being an influencer, I can't stand that word, but you know what I mean by that. Uh, even in that realm, it's still a little bit embarrassing to be known as a tarot card reader. And again, it, it, that shouldn't matter. I, I know, I get it. Again, this is the conundrum that I find myself in, um, in my mind. This has nothing to do with miserable people who, you know, just cannot stand seeing somebody successful. And, you know, it has nothing to do with them. I feel sorry for those poor souls. I hope they uh, find whatever it is that they're looking for in their life. Uh, so that they can stop trying to go tear people down, you know. I feel sorry for those people. This has nothing to do with them. Um, and the second most common 
response that I got from that video was, there are no accidents. Uh, because I did say that my career was an accident. And look, let's, let's get real clear here. I am very aware that this was no accident. I completely understand my spiritual mission. I, I understand 100% why the universe put me in this position, why it all unfolded the way that it unfolded. I totally understand that. Um, again, this is just kind of a battle between my ego and my higher self. It's, it's a little battle that I got going on in my head. I get it. I mean, it makes perfect sense. Dude, I'm telling you right now, if my story was put into a movie, it could make an amazing movie. It, like, it seriously would. It, it, to, to sit and break down the way my whole journey unfolded and whatnot is even fascinating to me. Just even looking at it from an outsider's perspective, you know, even if it had nothing to do with me, that would be a fascinating movie to sit and watch, you know? So I get it. I know that there are no accidents. I'm talking about from my ego's perspective. I spent two straight years trying to manifest self-employment. I said to myself, I'm going to sit at home and work on the internet and make six figures a year. That was all I said. And when I dove in and started actually putting forth the work to make that happen, uh, the, the picture that I had painted in my mind, what I was going for, was I wanted to be one of those super affiliates. That's, that's, that's what I originally set out to do, was to be a, a super affiliate, a, a person who sits back. <clears throat> my goal was to just sit back, you know, and, and be in my own little hermit world, my face not out there in the public, Nobody knows anything about me. Nobody knows who I am. Nobody knows what I do. Uh, I can just kind of hide behind websites and ads that get run on social media and Google and whatnot. And, you know, rake in commission checks from, you know, promoting other companies' products. That was my original goal. That was my original plan. And um, I, I never in a gazillion years thought that you know, me putting a couple of tarot videos on my YouTube channel would be the start of the business that the universe had in mind for me and not the business I had in mind for myself. Um, I mean, there, there was a couple of readers that I would watch and I can remember one of them very specifically. I, I remember thinking, you know what, that's cool and that's respectable, you know, because this, 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 this particular reader that I'm referring to is somebody that actually does do this work from the heart. And you can tell that she has a mission in mind and that she wants to help and and she's good at what she does. And I can remember thinking, man, you know what? That, that'd be a, a cool job to have for, for those people who are in that world, you know? Um, but I never in a gazillion years ever thought that it would happen to me. And if, if I would have known that that was the path that I was on, I would have sabotaged the path. I'll never forget when I got my first reading, a random lady approached me uh, in this new town that I had just moved to, 2,000 miles away from where I grew up, and she said, I'm supposed to read for you. And I had no idea what that meant. And she said, Spirit is telling me I'm supposed to read for you. Do I have your permission? I said, well, sure. You know, And she takes me over to her house and starts flipping these strange, funny-looking cards all over the place, and she's telling me details about my childhood that nobody knew and freaked me out, <clears throat> freaked me. The now, obviously, this lady was a psychic medium. She was much more than just a tarot card reader. But that was the first glimpse that I got into the tarot world and, and thought, whoa, I can't believe that tarot shit is really real, you know? And, um, you know, fast forward a year and a half later after I had kind of buried that little memory, um, I never would have clicked on my first YouTube tarot reading video if I hadn't got that reading from that lady. Now, here's the funny part about it, okay? Spirit was sitting on this lady's shoulder, talking into her ear like a damn parrot, telling her details about my childhood that nobody, let alone, let alone some random lady 2,000 miles away from where I grew up would know. But you know what Spirit didn't tell that lady? 
Spirit didn't tell that lady why she was reading for me. Spirit wouldn't tell her that. Oh no, Spirit did not tell her, hey, the reason I'm reading, that I'm having you read for this dude is because uh, he needs to see that, you know, this can be a very, very helpful tool because this is what I'm going to have him doing in just a couple short years. Because if she would have told me that, I would have completely sabotaged the path. I would have said, hell no, nah, I'm not doing that stupid shit. Uh-uh, no. I would have totally sabotaged the path and I would have evaded my mission. And I was at a position in my life where if I would have avoided and evaded my mission, I would have died. I mean, I don't have time to go into it. Some of you have heard the story, but where I was in my life, if I would have turned my mission down, I literally would not have survived probably another year. So I get it, dude. I totally get it. I know that it's not an accident. Um, that that's just, you know, the battle that my ego and my higher self kind of have. And, and I don't like it every time I catch myself complaining or kind of like cringing when, when somebody recognizes me as a tarot reader, I feel guilty. I don't think I should feel that way about it, you know, because this career has, not only changed, helped change the lives of tens of thousands of people that I've been able to help, but it's changed my life drastically and dramatically. It's changed the course of my children's lives. This has had a tremendous impact. I mean, an impact that is beyond anything that I ever imagined possible on so many people, including my children, you know, and you don't know how bad of a situation they were in that if it wasn't for my career, I wouldn't have been able to save them from that. So I get it. I, I, I understand that it, it's not an accident. I get it. I'm just voicing something that I've been battling for a while that I, I, I want to change my perception on it. Um, now, not many of you know that I have actually attempted several times to stray away from the tarot. Some of you have probably caught on to that a little bit, but I have seriously made multiple attempts to stray away from it. And every time I do that, the universe throws up the roadblock on me. Like straight up. <laughs> and I get it, man. I get it. So I'm working on it though. Like I said, I get it. I understand my spiritual mission. I totally get why I was put in the position that I was in. Uh, it's just something that I need to work through. I need to stop being so ashamed of what I do because I'm worried about how I want to be perceived. That That's really all that it is. It's just some ego-based bullshit that I want to be perceived a certain way. And, you know... Uh, the way my ego wants to be perceived is not as somebody who sits and flips cards on the internet. <laughs> and, and I know there are so many people who are dying to try to be a, a tarot reader. I mean, desperately trying to do what I do. And, and the universe won't grant them the same blessings that it granted me. And again, another thing that reminds me that I'm very, very blessed and very privileged for the universe to have given me this position. So again, it just all boils down to the fact that I'm having a little battle between my ego and my higher self. And I know that, that it's not an accident. This has nothing to do with jealous haters or anything like that. This is just me. This is just me against me. It has nothing to do with anybody else. This is all in my own head. And I want 2024 to be the year that I work through that so that I can release it and let it go. And then whatever happens from there is what happens. So, all right, this is the last thing that I'm going to say on the subject matter. I just wanted to get that out there and put that in the ether as we start off 2024, the year of the dragon. All right, I'm going to get out of here. Y'all have a good day.